Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, my dear students. How is everyone? Alhamdulillah. So two more days, inshallah, and then your course will complete. Alhamdulillah. Kasira and two more duas also. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from all of us. Alhamdulillah. Okay, let's begin with dua. <clears throat> نحمده و نسلی علی رسول الکریم اما بعد فوز باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رب شرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری و حل لقدتا من لسانی یفقہ قولی رب زدنی علم اللہم اہد قلبی و صدد لسانی و صل صفیمت قلبی آمین سم آمین انشاءاللہ we will do دعا نمبر 25 today And it's a beautiful du'a, alhamdulillah, one of my favorites. All du'as are my favorite, but alhamdulillah, this du'a always brings so much peace and so much contentment whenever I make this du'a, alhamdulillah. Allahumma, O oh Allah, inni indeed I as'aluka, I ask you, ladzata, sweetness, and nazara, looking ila upon wajhika, your face. As you all know, Alhamdulillah, um, Inshallah, we hope and pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us Jannatul Firdaus. So once all the people will be in Jannah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask them different questions and then, you know, the people of Jannah will be enjoying and the blessings which they, they are given there and, you know, they, um, and even if they're asked, they will be asked that, have you seen any torment trial in your life? And they said, no, nothing, you know. And uh, so at that time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will uh, to chosen one. So there will be some special people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will choose and he will show them his face. So it will not be all the people of Jannah. It will be the people of Jannatul Adan, which is the highest level of Jannah. So there are two narrations about the levels of Jannah. One is that there are hundreds, hundred level of les, levels of Jannah. And according to another narration uh, of Aisha Ristalanha, it's been mentioned that uh, according to the verses of the Quran, so there are 6,666 uh, levels of Jannah. So all those who will be on the highest level of Jannah, they will be honored and they will be among those VIPs whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show his face to them. And when they will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will be, you know, full of awe and it will be like that we have never seen anything like this, even in this Jannah. So this will be one of the greatest blessing, one of the greatest gift for the people of Jannah. So make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make all of us among those, inshallah. Ameen. Okay, let's read it one more time. Allahumma inni as'aluka ladzat an-nazari ila wajhik. O Allah, indeed I, I ask you for the sweetness of looking upon your face. Amen. Let's see the breakdown of the dua. Allahumma in is one word, which means O oh Allah. Inni has two words in it, inna and then ya. Again, the amazing ya, which means I. As'aluka has two. As'alu means I ask and ka is you, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, referring to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It, it is a pronoun. Lazata is one word which means sweetness, something which brings contentment to the heart, which brings happiness to the heart. And it's such contentment which fills you up with happiness. So that is lazza. Anadara is one word which means looking and nazara means looking with your eyes. It will not be some imagination. It will be real thing. So nazara is used actually for thing which we can visualize and we can see uh, in front of us. Ila is a letter which is used in to, upon, on. So all these meanings are ila. Then wajhika, waj is one word which means face and ka is your, which is referring to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, this dua is a part of a long dua and that dua is beautiful too. So it's in Sahih Nisai, An Nisai. 
So Atta ibn As-Saib narrated that his father said, Amar bin Yasir led us in prayer and he made it brief. Some of the people said to him, you made the prayer short, I mean, or brief. He said, nevertheless, I still recited supplications that I heard from the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When he got up and left a man, he was my father, but he did not name himself. Followed him and asked him about that supplication. Then he came and told the people. So this is one of the dua which Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made and he is narrating it from his father. And this is the dua. O oh Allah, by your knowledge of the unseen and your power over creation, keep me alive so long as you know that living is good for me and cause me to die when you know the death is better for me. O oh Allah, cause me to fear you in secret and in public. I ask you to make me true in speech in times of prayer and of anger. I ask you to make me moderate in times of wealth and poverty. And I ask you for everlasting delight and joy that will never cease. I ask you to make me pleased with, what, with that which you have decreed and for an easy life after death. I ask you for the sweetness of longing upon your face and the longing to meet you in a manner that does not entail a calamity that will bring about harm or a trial that will cause devi deviation. O oh Allah, beautify us with the adornment of faith and make us among those who guide and are rightly guided. Amen. So it is part of this dua I asked you for the sweetness of looking upon your face. So in this dua, we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those VIPs who will have the honor of seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among them. Allahumma, ay, O Allah, indeed, Allahumma inni, O Allah, indeed, I, as'aluka, I ask you, lazzat an sweetness of looking, ila wajhika, upon your face. Okay? Okay, let, let us uh, read this dua. I didn't add the slide there. Okay. Uh, let me okay. I will start from the end. <laughs> so because some always raise hand first and others are left then. Talha Mujtaba. Yes, Talha. Okay. Yes. Al can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Allahumma inni as'aluka laddata nadari ila wajhika. Very good. Can you read one more time with me? Allahumma inni as'aluka laddata nadari ila wajhika. nadari. Nadari ila wajhika. Yes, the zal and zo both will be very light. Okay, don't put okay. too much stress on them. Lazatan nazari. Lazatan nazari. Mashallah, barakallah. Translation. Oh, 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 Allah! Indeed, I, I ask you for the sweetness of looking upon your face. Okay, barakallah. Yumna. Um, Allahumma inni as'aluka laddatan nazari ila wajjah um, wajhika. Wajhika, yes. One more time. 
اللہ انی اس الک لدت نظری الا وجہ کا Oh, uh, oh, Allah, indeed, I ask you for the sweetness of looking upon your face. Okay, good, good. MashaAllah, Allah Mubarak. Can my sister read? Yes, she can. Allahumma inni as'aluka ladhatan ladhatan nadhari ila wajhik. Ila wajhik. Good. What is the name of it? Alishba. Elishba, okay. Good job, Elishba and Yumna. Okay. Yusuf Muhammad. Allah, yes. Allahumma inni as'aluka as lazzat al-nazari ila wajhik. Oh Allah, I, indeed I, uh, indeed I, ask you uh, for the sweetness of looking upon your face very good mashallah allah mubarak maisha salman Good job. Sakina Uzair. Allahumma inni as'aluka lazzata nazari ila wajh. Oh Allah, indeed, I, I ask you for the sweetness of looking upon your face. MashaAllah, very good. Barakallah feek. Okay. Turish Awar. Yes, Turish Awar. Okay. Allahumma inni as'aluka lazatan nazari ila wajhika. Wajhika. Good, good. Wajhika. One more time. Allahumma. Allahumma inni as'aluka ladhattazari Ladhattanazari Ladhattanazari ila wajuhika Wajhika 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 Very good, mashallah Zakallah Hani Osman Allahumma inni as'aluka lazafan nazari ila wajhik. Oh Allah, indeed I ask you for the sweetness of looking upon your face. Good job, Hania. Okay. Afaf Bakani. Yes, Afaf. Allahumma inni as al uka lazatanasari ila wajhik. Oh Allah, indeed, I ask you for the sweetness of looking upon your face. Can my sister read? Yes. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Allahumma inni as'aluka Lazzatanna Lazzatanna Sara Sara Ila Ila Wajhik Wajhik Oh Allah, indeed I ask I ask you for for the sweetness of looking upon your face. Okay, mashallah. Good job. What is your name? Aisha. Aisha. Good job, Aisha and Afaf. Mashallah. Allah Mubarak. Okay, inshallah, we'll stop here for today. And tomorrow I'll also I'll try to give to new students who have never read before, inshallah. Okay?
Um, Alhamdulillah, Sister Maryam is with us. Inshallah, we will start our tafsir class now. Alhamdulillah, you will do juz number 28 today. Alhamdulillah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put a lot of barakah in your learning and make things easy for you, inshallah. Subhanakallah wa bihamdika, ashadu an la ilaha illa anta, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Maryam, over to you. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you so much, Sister Shazia, for teaching us another beautiful dua. How's everyone doing? Everyone excited for the third last day? Alhamdulillah. So may Allah enable us to uh, make the most of these days. So inshallah, I'm going to share the slides. But before that, I wanted to share one more thing with all of you. That inshallah, on the last day, we're going to do du'as together. So if you want to share your du'as, you can either post them on the portal like where we have questions, I'm gonna inshallah make another thread uh, where we have, uh, we will just call it du'a section, all right? So right now don't post it under questions, just post your du'as there. So inshallah we can make your du'as together on that day, how's that? So whatever you wanna make du'a for, and inshallah that du'a you, you can make for everyone. So it doesn't have to have your names with them. It's just, you know, um, your du'as inshallah. Um, you know, we all will make them together. So inshallah be something nice. All right, so let's begin. نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي ربنا زدنا علما اللهم فقهنا في الدين آمين May Allah give us the correct understanding of the deen and may Allah enable us to benefit from this juice as well and subhanallah from this juice when I was going over the ayat and trying to look for something for you guys I came across something so amazing that Pretty much all the surahs they talk about, either family or wealth or money or business, something or the other, which is to do with us, right? The, the problems we go through, the situations we come across, and also it talks about hypocrisy a lot. So inshallah, this juz is going to shake us and this juz should make us better people, all right? So make a dua right now, that will Allah make it a beneficial um, session for me and for all of us. Amen. So let's begin. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytuan rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim So we did not cover Surah Al-Hadid yesterday, all right? But we cannot miss it. Why? Well, the whole Surah is so amazing, so many lessons. But one thing which is very important in the Surah is the light. The light and life will only be for the believers on the Day of Judgment. Right now, people are enjoying light. Everyone can use electricity. Everyone can see with the help of light, sunlight and all. But on that day, it'll be pitch dark. Only there will be light based on our actions. So if you really, really, really want to benefit from, um, you know, subhanAllah, our actions, then we need to fix them today before it's too late. We need to, inshallah, do something so that we have a bigger light. So we're going to talk about light now. But before we get there, just want to show you um, the few ayat, ayah number 12 onwards. So what will happen on the Day of Judgment? So now, all of you, do you all remember the map of Day of Judgment from yesterday? Okay, bring it back into your memory. Okay, everyone, refresh it in your memory and then imagine the scene. So this scene is about uh, the believer's test part. And what is believer's test? When they will go over the bridge of Sirat, right? The Sirat bridge. So this is what we're talking about in these ayat exclusively on the day you will see the believing men and believing women their light proceeding before them so there'll be light in front of them so easy for them to see right like imagine you're driving and your headlights are working your car's headlights are working so you can easily see but if they're not working and it's pitch dark outside can you see can you even drive yes or no did you ever try to like not you drive, like not you driving yourself but did you ever um, experience that when your parents were driving and it was really dark and you also did not have enough light of your car it's very hard to drive like that isn't it so subhanallah you can't even see nothing but you know sometimes someone else's someone else's car comes by and then we can see a little more isn't it so we kind of use their light in dunya in this world we can do that but not in the hereafter so let's see on the day you will see the believing men and believing women their light proceeding before them, right in front of them, and on their right. 
and it was it will be said to them like they will be given good news even then like imagine it's a test it's a believer's test but even during the test the believers will be given beautiful news your good tidings today are of gardens beneath which rivers flow wherein you will abide eternally that is the great attainment so like they will be getting you know good news that's so beautiful alhamdulillah so if you were scared about yesterday's math alhamdulillah if you are a really good believer and if you're not being a hypocrite then you're good alhamdulillah and our life depends on our iman but not only our faith also our actions because some people because of the wrong actions they won't be able to cross the bridge first time right they they will drop not because of their hypocrisy not because of their hypocrisy but because of their major sins so we have to have good iman which is faith and amal which is actions so faith and actions both will help us with the light so they will have light in front of them they will have light on their right and then they will be given good news of what gardens beautiful views and eternity that's so beautiful right you know you know like it's like let's say you're going for a vacation and your travel is really really hard so let's say you have to take a very um hard road like you know very um curvy road and this road has like no barriers and you have to go uphill on a mountain but the mountains like you know when you reach up there the resort where you're going to stay is amazing but you know this path is very 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 hard and you're like oh my god maybe i'm going to slip maybe our car is not going to make it did you ever go to any place like that yes or no brother afaf you can put yourself on mute okay can anyone hear me use the buttons okay is my voice double for some reason or is it fine brother afa keep your uh, mic on mute for some reason it's taking your feed you can all hear me nice right proper right okay alhamdulillah i'm going to just keep my computer on mute so that i don't hear myself again okay so we're talking about a very um hard way to get to a very nice place so similarly on the day of judgment people when they will be going through this scary bridge they would be getting good news don't worry you're going to make it you're going to get gardens you're going to get jannat you're going to get beautiful view from there and you will live there forever it's just one you know hard patch that's it the last one to go and that is real success when we make it to the other side without being dropped in the hellfire we are good subhanallah right so this sirat this bridge is set up over hell remember that and it is very thin thinner than a hair sharper than a sword people will pass over it according to their deeds whoever used to run to do good deeds in this world will quickly pass over that bridge as well whoever was slow in doing good deeds in this world lazy will have hard time passing it make sense so this is the connection and people will uh, vary the way people will differ the way they will pass over it some will pass in the blink of an eye some will pass with light will pass like lightning you know when the lightning comes and it goes like it's like literally a flash within seconds but blink of an eye is even faster than that and some will pass like wind some will some will pass like swift horses some will pass like fast camels because camels can't really run that fast as the horses do so we are going sort of downhill now and some will walk some will crawl and some will be thrown into hell no one will pass over the sirat except that they used to say they were believers disbelievers won't even go over it because there is no chance for them to survive right so there is no test for them this word this one because they're not going to pass it because they don't even have the prerequisites you understand the concept of prerequisites you know when you take admission in any school or any university they ask you for some credits right they ask you for 
some prerequisites. So if the prerequisites are not there, you're not gonna make it. They don't even bother taking your exam, right? Even to get in med medical school, you have to have good grades, isn't it? You cannot just say, okay, I want to give the exam. Let me in. No, they won't let you in. You have to show something in order to prove yourself that yes, I'm able to do it. And then they will let you sit in the exam, right? Even though that's just an exam of this world, but subhanAllah, they treat it very, uh, you know, we can say carefully. And they don't let anyone just come and join the, the med school without proper prerequisites, right? So what will be my state or what will be the state of my light on the day of judgment? This is the question we need to ask ourselves. Am I doing a lot of good deeds? Am I running towards good deeds? Or am I running away from good deeds? And then what will happen? On the same day, the hypocrites, they would also be on the same um, you know, bridge. You know that, right? So they would say something. What would they say? Wait for us. Give us some of your light. So here we're learning about the conversations between believers and hypocrites. So hypocrites would be running after believers on the bridge and would be saying, please, please give us some of your light. Turn on your headlights for us. But is it possible? Tell me. Yes. Is it possible? No, not on the day of judgment. No. They would say, share your light with us. Please share a little bit of it. But to be told, go back. Find your own light. We cannot give you our light. And imagine when you yourself have, you know, when you yourself have a little bit of light because some believers, because they had very less good deeds and they would have little light, just like on their toe, that's it. So imagine you, it's like a pitch dark area. You are walking on something which is like a thread and then like very thin, very sharp. And then you have only a little bit of torch light, which kind of blinks. Sometimes it's on, sometimes it's off. Why? Because our actions were like that. Sometimes we, we used to pray, sometimes we were used to slap. Sometimes we used to join prayers for no reason. Sometimes we, we used to delay prayers and pray together, all of them. This is not right. Prayers have a time, set time for a reason. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to be disciplined. Five slots for these prayers. We cannot just jumble them, jumble them up together. Okay? Can you remember this? Inshallah. Because we don't want to have that torch light which kind of blinks and you know sometimes it's bright, sometimes there's no light. It's very hard to stand on something thin like that for hours. And that day will be really, really, really hard. So they will be told to go back to find light from where? From either the plane of Hushar, you know, plane of Hushar is what? Where they were all standing and waiting for the day of judgment to begin. Where they were standing to get their account done. Because now everything is done. Now they're off to Jannah. That's the time. And they would also say, go back in dunya and do good deeds now. Is it possible? There is no dunya anymore. Everything is gone. Everything was destroyed. Right? SubhanAllah. And then what will happen? All of a sudden, a door will open up. And from on the one side of the door, there will be fire and the door will close and believers would pass. So after believers would pass, the door will close on the face of disbelievers. That will be too late. This image is just for you to get the idea. Of course, Jannah is not like this. Jannah is way too beautiful and hellfire is not like this. It's just to tell you that what does this ayah say? Okay, just to explain that they will be left behind, doors will close, no way to enter Jannah. And the hypocrites will call to the believers, were you not with us? Or were we not with you in dunya? Remember we were your friends? Remember we were your siblings? Remember we were your family? Remember we were your cousins? Believers will say, yes, but you afflicted yourselves and you awaited misfortune for yourself and you doubted and your wishful thinking deluded you until there came the command of Allah. And the deceiver deceived you concerning Allah. So few things here. We have to pay attention to all of them so that we don't fall for this. They would say, we thought we were friends. You were going to give us, you were, you were supposed to give us your light. The believer would say, sorry, we could not because you put yourself into destruction. What was their destruction? They used to wait and they used to doubt. Wait for what? You know, if Allah will allow me, I will do good deeds. Everything is written. If it's written for me to be a good person, I will be a good person. No, that wasn't the case. 
That's not how it works. And let me tell you, give you another example of this, because, you know, many times people say that I will become religious, I will become righteous when Allah wills. But they don't say this for worldly matters. They don't say I will work when Allah wills. I will study when Allah wills. They don't do that. They don't say I will eat when Allah wills. Otherwise, I'm just going to lie here and just wait for food to come and get dropped in my mouth. Do we ever do that? That's silly, right? So if we don't do that for other things, why do we treat deen like this? Why do we treat Islam like this? Why do we treat Allah's commands like this? That we say that, okay, when Allah wants, then we will become good. That doesn't make sense. So they waited for no reason and they doubted. Doubted in what? Doubted in Jannah. They were doubtful about Day of Judgment. Because if you are certain that Day of Judgment will come, it is impossible that you don't prepare for it. Like if someone tells you that, you know, we are leaving tomorrow, we are leaving this house, we're moving to a new place. So pack your stuff, otherwise everything will be left behind. And you're like, no, I don't believe it. Oh, I doubt you. What will happen next day? Whole family would move, you'll be left doubting, right? You'll be left, or even if they're nice enough to take you, which is not possible on the day of judgment though, but in dunya, if they're nice enough to take you, you won't be able to take your belongings because your parents have just, let's say your parents just had one hour to pack and leave. You did not do anything in that hour. Now you have nothing packed. So you'll be left with nothing. So don't doubt a day which is going to come. And it's not only Islam telling us this. The previous scriptures also told us this. Christians also have the concept of day of judgment. Jewish people, they also know about day of judgment. So day of judgment is real. We are not supposed to doubt it. The moment we doubt it, we're gone. Okay, let me give you another example because that's another question a lot of people ask. So let's say, let me give you two scenarios. Okay, I want all of you to pay attention because it's very important and it's going to help you inshallah um, whenever in school or anywhere people ask you about it. Okay, so let's say there, I'm going to draw something now. Okay, so let's say there are two situations. There are two possibilities, okay? There are two possibilities. One is that if we take the example of a flight, okay, let's take the example of an airplane and a flight. So let's say your friends and you, all of you planned out to go for a vacation. So you all are, you know, hoping to go for a vacation, but you're doubtful. You are doubtful that maybe we're going, maybe we're not going. Maybe it's just a lie. Maybe there's no flight. Maybe I don't have a ticket. Maybe, you know, it's not worth it. Maybe there will be no plane. Maybe there will be no airport, right? So you are just thinking like that. But on the other hand, right, you still prepare, right? You're doubtful, but you still prepare because what if there is a plane? What if we are leaving? What if my friends leave me behind and I'm the only one left and everyone's going to go and enjoy? So what is, what is smarter to prepare or not to not prepare? Okay, let me ask, rephrase the question. Is it smart to not prepare? Yes or no? Is it smart to not prepare? No, not at all. So similarly, the people who say, we don't believe in Akhirah. We don't believe there will be day of judgment. We don't believe in paradise. So aren't they doing something silly? For them, of course, we believe 100% there is Akhirah. But the people, the disbelievers or the atheists, they, you know, just think about it. Aren't they doing something silly? What if there is a day, day of judgment? What will happen to them then? Like it's smarter to prepare either way, right? It's better to be on the safe side. Because if there is no day of judgment, according to them, then no problem. But if there is day of judgment, then they're busted big time. But Alhamdulillah, we believe in the day of judgment. So that's not a problem for us. We don't doubt because hypocrites doubt, disbelievers doubt, believers, Muslims, they don't doubt because, you know, look at them. If they doubt, then they're gonna not get, they won't be able to make it through the bridge. And we don't want to be in that category. And they had what? They had false hopes. What were their false hopes? Oh, we will be good. Even if there is some type of afterlife or maybe second life, third life, eighth life, ninth life, whatever life, 
we be good these were just their wishful thinking and their false hopes because that's not true there's no proof that people have more than one life in this world this is only one life in this world and then there's an eternal life afterwards and that is not in this world and then what happened death came to them they died and then they died in these wishful thinking they died in these uh, wishful thoughts sorry and they died in these doubts what will happen to them nothing good of course and who made it worse for them their enemy friend so you can call him friend enemy right so this shaitan deluded them even more yeah you're right there's nothing there's nothing even though shaitan also knows there will be day of judgment but shaitan doesn't want anyone to make it to jannah because he is jealous of human kind he doesn't like us even if we obey him he hates us because he thought that he deserved more than human kind he deserved more respect than human kind he did not get it he became weird he became revengeful and he's taking a revenge on us now believers non believers everyone he's taking a revenge from everyone so today no ransom will be taken from you or from those who disbelieve so not even from disbelievers and not even from hypocrites so remember the three categories so two of them are gone nothing even if they want to give so much sadaqa even if they want to do they want to give all their property as a ransom to free them from hellfire there is no ransom it be told your refuge is the fire it is most worthy of you and wretched is the destination they be rejected no matter how many please some of the disbelievers they will make the us but they will be told no your final destination is hellfire and that's it and subhanallah when you think about disbelievers and hypocrites hypocrites will be in the lowest of low of hellfire worst than disbelievers why because they used to fake their iman they used to look like muslims they used to act like muslims but they were not muslims may allah save us from that state so the surahs in just 28 are nine all together and in these surahs uh, i'm just going to give you the translation one time surah al mujadila the disputer it's about a lady who came to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and then she was disputing about a matter to do with a divorce type situation okay divorce type situation it wasn't a divorce but divorce type situation and she was really sad and she was you know let's say uh, discussing and she was presenting her arguments and she was like disputing arguing with rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam because she wanted a way out she wanted a solution and then she was talking to allah as well in her conversations like oh allah help me sort of thing oh allah what do i do now because she did not like that condition or state and allah helped her allah heard her that's our lord if we ask him he listens if we make dua to him he grants those to us and second surah surah al hashr that means the gathering what gathering hashr is also used for day of judgment but this gathering is referring to another gathering so let's just move on and talk about the third surah third surah is surah al mumtahina which means the examined it was a test for the believing people when they were moving from uh, from makkah to medina later and you know a lot of people they were coming now for just wealth because now muslims were flourishing muslims were rich muslims had their own beautiful you know you can say um, country medina wasn't a country but you know it was like their own land you can say so muslims had their own land and they had like really amazing laws and they had really amazing set up people were like in love with each other people were like really kind and nice to each other so these people they were now moving from makka coming to medina for all of this for the good times so that's why they were take, they were examined that are you really a believer or are you just coming here for some other reasons just worldly reasons or are you really are a believer so there there was a test there were some questions they had to um, you know answer they had they had to take a pledge that no i won't steal no i won't do anything haram and no i'm not like that anymore and then they were allowed to stay there surah at-tusr which means the row what is a row row shows discipline and our deen emphasizes islam emphasizes rows so much that's why we pray in rows in our um prayers in masajid in jamaa together in rows 
So rows make us stronger. Rows make us what? Smarter. And then we are able to follow rules when we follow the rows. So inshallah, when, one, once the masajids are open, when you, go, when you guys go back, please stand next to each other like a wall. Okay, like a wall, not like loopholes. The way people are standing these days, this is not the usual way to do rows. This is just because of the situation. Just, this is just because of the pandemic we're going through, but not the real way. Real way is feet to feet, shoulder to shoulder, like a strong wall, inshallah, because we believers are a wall. Then comes Suratul Jumu'ah. Suratul Jumu'ah means the Friday, right? So it doesn't mean Friday prayer only, it means Friday. And Suratul Munafiqoon, which means the hypocrites. So a lot of times hypocrites are mentioned in these surahs. And then comes Suratul Taghabun, which means the mutual deprivation. And Taghabun means the day of judgment because people will be deprived. Why? Because of their actions, a day of deprivation for them. And Surah Al-Talaq, Talaq means divorce. And Surah Al-Tahreem, Tahreem means the prohibition. Okay, you got all the translations down? The meanings down? Perfect. Cool facts about the surahs. I'm going to give you one by one so that you don't have to worry about writing all of them together. Okay, before that, did you notice that all of these surahs were Makki? Yes or no? All of these surahs are Makki? Yes or no? Tell me. You have clues on the slide. No, they're all Madani. So all of these surahs are Madani. There is one surah which people are sort of confused about, but still a stronger opinion is that all of them are Madani. So easy to remember, Alhamdulillah. Okay, so cool fact for Surah Al-Majadila is that in this surah, we're going to learn about the party of Shaitan. It's Shaitan, sorry, spellings are wrong. So it's party of Shaitan versus party of Allah. Like they're people, they're called Hizbul Shaitan, the group of Shaitan, because they follow him, they listen to him. And this surah talks about hypocrites. This surah talks about some traits, some of their evil qualities. What are they? Let's see. Because we also need to check ourselves. Sahaba used to be worried. What if we are hypocrites? So who are we? Like we should not be very confident that, okay, I'm not a hypocrite. Because hypocrite, hypocrite is a fake person. You know, when you say something, something else and you do something else, you do become a munafiq. You do become a hypocrite. So that's why we need to align our words with our actions. Align your words with your actions so that you are a true believer. So don't claim big things so that it becomes hard for you to live according to them, right? Inshallah, we're going to talk about that as well in Surah Tusa, that how to, um, you know, fix this problem of hypocrisy because it can come anytime. It can come even towards the end of our lives. Maybe right now we are really good believers, but maybe after two years, we won't stay that. So inshallah, these lessons should serve you as reminders make good notes so that you can always come back to them and you can always stay connected with the Quran so that you don't ever become hypocritical, inshallah. One thing about them, they used to whisper secretly. So like, let's say the gathering is going on, Rasulullah Sallallahu would be giving khutbah and two people would be like, talking like this. Why? Discussing something or saying, oh my God, what is he saying? Oh my God, we can't do that. Oh, it's too hard. Oh my God, Islam is too, too brutal too hard, we can't do that. So this was their whisperings. If they were really believers, they should have had the guts to ask, right? That why is this command like this? Instead of whispering. So they would whisper like this among each other and they would tell Rasulullah Sallallahu oh, you are amazing. Oh, that was such a beautiful khutbah. Oh, we learned so much from it. But in reality, they did not learn nothing from it. In reality, they would backbite Rasulullah Sallallahu as well. And they would sometimes, so that was in the gatherings. Sometimes they would consult each other and conspire alone. So like after khutbah, they would just go to their joint. Like you can say some place where they would sit and meet. So they would sit and meet, uh, they, meet uh, they would meet each other and then they would make fun of the khutbah. They would make fun of the teachings of Islam. Oh, that was like this. Oh my God, that was like that. Oh, who can do that? It's too hard. Oh, did you see that, you know, Sahabi was going, uh, stuff, well, I shouldn't say that, but you know, Sahabi was like doing everything Rasulullah Rasul was saying, ha, 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 things like that. So they would say nice things at the, at the face, but they would be bad behind. 
So if you really have a problem, so let's just talk about the solution as well, right? Because sometimes it happens. You don't like what is being said in the meeting. It's okay to not like something, but have the guts to ask. Don't be a backbiter. Don't be a person who goes behind the back and talk like this about that gathering or about that khutbah or about that person. This is not right. And greeting, uh, they would say greetings through Rasulullah but they would have grudge. Or they would say, Salaam Alaikum, right? It's not the right way to say Salaam because Salaam Alaikum means, you know what? Death upon you. So they would give bad dua to Rasulullah instead of saying, Assalamu Alaikum or Salaam Alaikum. Make sense? So please fix the pronunciation of your salam. You may, you may be giving bad du'as to people without realizing. So Alhamdulillah, intentions do matter. That's a good thing. But our words do have an effect. So please don't keep on giving people bad du'as. So properly say, Assalamu Alaikum, all right? So make sure lam is pronounced. And then they would talk about sins, that how can we commit another sin? And how can we cross the limits set by Allah? And how can we disobey Rasulullah Sallallahu Okay, if he told us to do something, how can we go, go against it? Go against it. Like if he told us to come to Jama prayer, what can we do in order to avoid it? Which excuse can we bring so that we don't have to go for Jama? So these were hypocrites. So another thing we learned from this surah is that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, He listens to you, even if you sit together in a closed room in a very private meeting and talk about any matter, Allah is there for you. Allah is there. How is Allah there? Allah knows everything. Allah doesn't have to be here with us physically because it's not even, it, it doesn't even suit him, right? He is the king of the kings. He is Akbar, he's the greatest. Our dunya is very small. He doesn't come in inside the dunya, right? SubhanAllah. So he is there means he knows. Like these days, if you want to imagine that someone's with you, so right now, you can say that I'm with you, right? I'm with you, right? Even though I'm not sitting with you in your country, but I'm with you because it's very easy. Technology makes it easy for us to be together. So how hard would it be for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be with everyone like that? So this ayah says that when you are consulting with each other and you're making fun of others or plotting and planning against each other, Thinking that you're only three, remember, Allah is the fourth one. And if you're five, then remember, Allah is the sixth one. So you're not alone. He knows what you're doing. He knows what you're planning. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can turn your plans and plots against you. And it happens many times. People try to harm you and they harm themselves. Someone comes running to hit you, they die themselves, right? Many times it happens that people try to harm you, but they are hurt themselves. Another thing, so one is that you sit together in a meeting and talk about other people like that. Another is that you're in the gathering, like you're right in front of those people, but then you have some code words or sign language, or you just, you know, um, poke your elbow, right? Or you just, you know, make that um, eyebrow sign or something or that, whatever. Like, you know what I'm saying, right? Friends sometimes do that in class as well. When they wanna mock someone, when they want to make fun of their teachers, when they want to make fun of other kids, they have some code words. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, don't do that. Don't do that. And also, it is to do with whispering. Especially it is to do with whispering. So we should not do nothing to harm others. Because all of this is counted as backbiting. Even if you're not saying a word, but if you're typing something, oh, look at her, she's again. Oh, look at the door, right? So if you're gonna talk like this about other people, look at the geek, look at this, look at that. So this is backbiting. Even if you're not saying it, but you're, if you're typing it to your friends, so this is wrong. And whispering, sometimes people whisper, right? Look at her, you know what she's doing? Oh my God. So this is whispering, so this is not allowed. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, okay. Uh, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us some exception as well, but he's telling us, when should you not whisper at all? When if it's something sinful, so backbiting is sin sinful for sure. Talking about some crime, it'll be let's just steal that thing or let's just hit that kid or let's just bully that girl. All of this is crime, okay? So when we are going to whisper for cr some crime or sin, this is not allowed at all. And then 
for transgression, crossing limits, let's, let's say cheating in an assignment, copying someone's notes, stealing another student's assignment. That is transgression. So if you are doing it, okay, how about I go there and I'm gonna just distract her and you just steal all her stuff. That is transgression. And sometimes to transgress in disobeying Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sometimes in disobedience of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how do we disobey him? By going against his commands. So let me think of some command. Okay, so Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told us, or what he did was that um, he told us not to change the creation of Allah, right? It also comes in the Quran. You're not supposed to change the creation of Allah. What does it mean? If Allah made us in a certain way and it is not defective, you know, if it's something which is defective, that's a different thing. Like you, you let's say you're born, with, you're, you're born with something and that can be fixed, right? And it's, it's like, it is considered a defect. It is considered some type of, um, you know, ailment and it is a disease and it can be fixed, then inshallah, that's not a problem. But you're all fine. It's just you don't like the way your nose looks like, or you don't like the way your ear look, ears look like, and you don't like the way your eyebrows look like, and you don't like the way your eyelashes look like, and you try to change them. This is not allowed. And when you don't like your hair and you, you want to add exten extensions, that is also not allowed. It's a very clear hadith that says, you're not supposed to add hair to hair. So when we add hair to our hair on head, that's like adding extensions. And when we add um, eyelashes, fake eyelashes on our real eyelashes, that, are, that is also fake. That is also not good. So don't do that. What's allowed is, you know, something which is like, um, like you're putting on a little bit of makeup for Eid and stuff, right? That's okay because makeup is removable, but not permanent makeup, right? And lashes are not okay, even if they're removable or not removable. They are not allowed at all because they come under the hair category. Allah knows best. So please avoid them. Even though it's like a big fitna these days, everyone's dying to have those fake lashes. But you know, subhanAllah, they don't even look human. Go and check, search for camels. Camels have those kind of lash lashes. Humans never had that kind of lashes. So please grow up. Don't look like animals. Allah made you better. And similarly, like some people, they like fake nails. Right? So they have like long, fake nails. They don't look real. They don't look real, first of all. And secondly, they're so ugly. I don't know, maybe you find them nice and beautiful, but they're not nice. They look like, you know, you are some type of witch. So don't be a witch, all right, please. So be a nice, beautiful, innocent girl, inshallah. And alhamdulillah, guys are safe from all of these fitan, but guys are not safe from some other types of problems, right? So they want to change into... Some guys like to dress like girls. That's not good. So don't change the creation of Allah. Right? So Allah made you something. Be happy about it. And don't disobey Rasulullah Wasallam. He gave us these um, guidelines. So don't change the shape of, shape of your eyebrows. Right? Inshallah. And don't... Uh, and you're allowed to. Here we learn about the previous part was fala, don't do that. But here you're allowed to whisper in two cases, when you wanna do a good deed and when you wanna do something righteousness, something which is righteousness, for example. So let's say you're sitting in a masjid and then the fundraiser is going on. You can easily stand in front of everyone and say, I'm giving thousand dollars, right? But you don't wanna do that because you don't wanna make it public. You don't want people to know that you're giving charity because you're doing it for Allah and you don't wanna ruin it. Make sense? Yes or no? So you whisper. So you whisper to maybe um, the stage guy or someone who's standing there and doing the fundraiser that, yes, I want to give thousand, but please don't tell anyone. So that whisper is allowed because you're doing something nice. You're not harming anyone. You're not hurting anyone with your whispers. And there's another beautiful verse in this very surah which talks about that when you whisper, believers, they get hurt. For example, let me talk about that and then I'm going to come back to the other example. So let's say you're sitting with your friends. Okay, you're all chit-chatting, you're enjoying. And all of a sudden, one of your best friends, she talks to another friend of yours and they both were looking at you, okay? They just whispered, you don't, you don't even hear what they said, but they were looking at you. Are you gonna feel amazing? Yes or no? Are you gonna, are you gonna feel amazing? Yes or no? Not at all, because you know, they looked at you and they said something. You're gonna feel really hurt. 
you're gonna feel, you, you're gonna wonder for the rest of your life what did they say right so that's why we're told not to do this because you may hurt people maybe they did not even say anything about you negative right it is possible but it may hurt hurt another person so be careful about the emotions of others if you really want to give a surprise party for your friend and if you want to do it like that then you tell her do it afterwards don't talk in front of in, in in front of her in a whispering fashion this is not right another example of doing um like you know something nice while whispering is let's say you have guests over all right so your mother whispers in your ear that can you please go to the kitchen and get that um you know platter of dry fruits and get fruits and get tea and stuff for the guests so that is nice because you know if you if your mother is going to say it loud it's going to look really really bad and it's going to be like really against the manners like okay please go uh, get the food for guests okay guests are here so we should give them food okay make tea for them okay bring this is really really bad so don't ever do that to the guests they're going to feel really embarrassed and they won't come to you ever again because it is as if they made your life difficult by coming and you're doing a favor on them by feeding them right so don't do that so then you can whisper if you have to whisper so let's say you're in a coffee shop and you're talking to each other right and then you want to throw a party for your friend and your your friend is also there so how can you like maybe it's a surprise get together and she doesn't even want, she doesn't even know that it is for her maybe you're giving her uh, a welcome back party or you're giving her a party for her gr good grades right so these are the good things we can celebrate and maybe for your quran class so inshallah after this if you guys know each other give each other parties for this if you know each other because this is something which is amazing maybe you have never taken a course like this before right maybe it's your first one because you're too young so alhamdulillah so this is a reason to celebrate so let's say it's a party surprise party so you don't want to tell her but you know she is there with you so she came with you in the same car so what do you do so you may have to whisper so be very gentle about that whispering while you're whispering don't look at her while you're whispering don't look at her so at least she doesn't feel bad and sad about it another thing we learn from the surah is accommodate everyone so let's say you were all sitting even in the masjid or classroom or home and someone else comes and then you don't even bother to make space for that person this is wrong this is against the meeting etiquettes this is against the etiquettes of gatherings in islam and it is from surah mujadila so make space for people allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us if you make space for people allah will make space for you and this is not just giving them space let's say for sitting you know sometimes there are revered sisters and brothers new muslims right so when new muslims they come we don't even give them space space as in we don't even include them in our conversations we don't even let them be with us we don't even invite them to our parties we don't even do nothing with them this is wrong we should accommodate every muslim and even when it comes to let's say you're sitting and your non muslim friend comes you should accommodate that person as well and let's say you're sitting at home and you're watching tv right so you have only let, let's say four seats and you're just four family members and your grandmother comes from next door she lives next door let's say so your grandmother comes from there so should you get up and give her the space or not tell me or should you say no i'm watching i was sitting here first i reached here first it's my spot it's my couch it's my house you should make space for her right so you can sit in your grandmother's lap right if you're nice enough or small enough or you can sit on the floor or you can just get another chair from the house but don't be a person who is like this accommodate everyone and make sure that everyone's together and this way inshallah you will have good relationship with everyone but also remember another thing if in a gathering you're told to leave then leave so let's say you were sitting and you were all uh, doing a meeting meeting is over now the the one who was conducting the meeting told you okay now we should leave and you were like no 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 i don't want to go well, leave all right so inshallah when someone tells you to leave then you can leave no problem that's also from islam listen to them surah al hashr in this surah we learn about a parable of a shaitan versus a disbeliever shaitan versus a disbeliever and then this surah begins with something called glorification words all right 
So all the surahs which begin with e either yusabbihu or sabbaha, right? Then anything to do with glory of Allah, they are called musabbihat surahs. So there are seven in Quran altogether, okay? So this is your assignment now. You have to look for, don't Google, it's, it's a pact. Don't Google for the names. Open your mushaf yourself or open Quran app yourself and check every surah's beginning. And when you notice a surah starting with sabbaha, yusabbihu, right? Anything like that, then put the name of that surah down here. Can you all do this? It's a bonus project. If you wanna do it, you can do it. If you don't wanna do it, no problem. But inshallah, it will help you with the scores for your certificate. Okay, next. From this surah we learned, we should take a lesson. We should take a lesson from the situation of hypocrites. And um, we, from the, there was this actually a situation, but I don't have much time to go over it, but inshallah, you can read it later. It was about people breaching the treaty. And it was about hypocrites telling the Jewish people that we're gonna help you, we're gonna support you, don't worry. But when the time came, the hypocrites were not there to support them. So they were punished big times. So two things we have learned, that two reasons of punishment are mentioned. When we go against Allah and Rasul, right? And another reason of punishment is when we do fisk. What is fisk? All of these things, five things. Fisk is immorality. When we do something which is dirty sin, when we rebel, rebel is when we want to say, I don't believe in this. No, I don't want to pray. No, I don't want to go for Hajj. This is rebellion. This is rebellion. Transgression is that you cross limits. You know that what kind of dress code you should wear, but you still cross limits. You still don't obey that. You still wear very, very dirty clothes. And perversion. When? What is perversion? Any idea? Ever heard this word before in your life? Right? So it can be different types of um, let me give you an example, which is suitable for you, inshallah. So it's like uh, being a deviant, but doing it in a way um, that people also don't really notice, right? So a corrupt person, deviant person, someone who distorts things. So you say, I know this is Islam, but this, this is not Islam, right? So changing deen, you can say in a way, when it, well, this is one of the examples. So deviant person who tells you, oh, hijab is not from the deen. Oh, you don't have to cover. Oh, you don't have to worry about this rule and that rule. It's okay. You can live like animals without any rules. And also fisk is impiety. So when someone is an evil person, right? Commits sin and sins and you see that. Like that, that's obvious from that person's personality and ways. Next surah, surah al-mumtahina. Um, the cool fact, which disbelievers can be taken as friends. Some disbelievers can be taken as friends as well. You may have a lot of friends who are not Muslims, right? You may have a lot of friends like that. But what is the criteria? Criteria is that they don't harm you, they don't harm your deen, and they don't say wrong things about your deen, okay? This is the criteria. If you remember this, then you can have, your, like if, you, if they're good like that, if they don't make fun of you or your religion, or your Prophet وسلم, or your God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then no problem, they can be your friends. But if they hurt you, if they harm you, and if they say wrong things about your deen, and if they put doubts in you, that really, oh really there's one God? Oh really there's a Prophet? Then don't make them friends. They're not worth your friendship at all. So we will just see who to be friend and who to show our affection to. So it is possible, let me give you another example. Let's say there is a very rich guy in your class and there is a very poor guy in your class. The rich guy is a non-Muslim and the poor guy is a Muslim. The rich guy has like a lot of friends because of course he throws parties every now and then and he gives people expensive gifts. So of course everyone likes that rich non-Muslim guy, but that non-Muslim guy, because he's so rich, he doesn't mind uh, saying wrong things about anyone. And he also says wrong things about Islam, but you still are hanging out with him hanging out with that crowd like crazy. Oh my God, please, I am your friend. Oh, you're so nice. You're so, you look so cool today. So all of this is wrong, right? Don't devalue yourself by following someone like that or showing your affection for some person like that. Instead of that, pick that poor person in your class and make that person your friend because that person is a believer. Can you, can you remember that? 
And that is what Allah wants from us. Because bad friends, they hurt you, sometimes with their words and sometimes with their actions. And they will hurt you big time in terms of your ending. Because they wish for you that you disbelieve. That's their wish. So as long as you're, as long as you're with them, they, they would try their best that you leave Islam. And remind, reminder for all of us, even our family won't be able to help us if we have wrong type of family or wrong, wrong type of friend. friend. So even within our family, if our family members are like that, like they are against Islam or they are, they are Muslims, but they don't like to implement Islam, then remember this, your family won't be able to help you on the day of judgment. So you have to decide for yourself. Next surah, surah Tusaf. This surah talks about a bargain to save ourselves from the hellfire. So the bargain ayahs, I'm not going to cover. You can inshallah, if you want to look for them, you can look for them. You also had a course. I hope you have taken that already, right? The self-control or self-discipline course. So um, if you have, then alhamdulillah, you have the notes and you have the slides. So I don't have to go over them. But if you haven't taken it, inshallah, whenever it's offered next time, maybe next year sometime, then please take it. It was, alhamdulillah, really beneficial for all of us. So first ayah of the surah, surah Tusaf, which is very, very powerful. O oh, believers, why do you say what you don't do? Why do you say what you don't do? Because this doesn't suit you. So the question is, why don't your words match your actions? Why are you very good with your speeches? Like we should be truthful, we should be nice, we should be caring, but you're none of that. So this is wrong. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is questioning. What's wrong with you? Why can't you be truthful? Two examples I'm going, get, I'm going to give you here. So this guy, he's saying that he's telling someone, sorry, I cannot come to the masjid today because I'm going to another halaqa. But this person is where? Somewhere else. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us, oh believers, why do you say something what you don't do? Why don't you go to halaqa then? You were saying you were going to halaqa. You were saying that you were going to the lecture. You were saying that you were about to attend the Quran class, but why didn't you do that? Another example would be, you say, I will join some Quran course, or I will memorize Quran, or I will give charity every day, even if it's few cents a day. But then you don't do that. Then you go back on your words. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kabura maqtan indallah. This is most hated in the sight of Allah. This action of lying like this is most hated because you're claiming piety, you're showing with your words that you're very nice and righteous and very amazing, but you're not. Some examples would be, you make a promise, but then you break it. What is the promise? Let's say you make a promise with some Islamic organization that I'm gonna come volunteer. And they're waiting and waiting for you, you're not there. Another example could be, you're not fulfilling a commitment. You made a commitment that you're going to, let's say, do an assignment or do a research to help someone, but you did not even do that. And third example would be you advise others to do good, but you don't do it. Like you tell your younger siblings, you should never lie, but you lie all the time. You tell, um, you know, your friends outside that, you know, I'm like really, you know, amazing high up there. I'm, I pray regularly, but when you come home, you don't even pray. So don't have double lies. Don't be Write it down. Don't be a convertible Muslim. You know convertible cars? Ever seen those convertible cars? They can have a roof and sometimes they don't have a roof. So they are, they have two faces. They look two different cars, isn't it? Because you know, when you cover the car, it's a different type of car. When you have, when you remove the cover, it's different. If it's, it's a different type of car, isn't it? So don't be a convertible Muslim. Stay a Muslim at home, stay a Muslim outside. Don't be one of those kids who act really religious at home and they're in front of their grandparents and their parents, they're like, yes, assalamu alaikum, mom. And then when they go to school, they're like, hey, buddy, how, how are you doing, dude? Like, what is this? Right? Of course, if they're not Muslims, you're not going to say salam, salam. But you know, remember that you are the same person. Stay that same nice person. Don't become a, don't become a gangster outside. And some girls, they wear hijab at home. They read school that pull out their hijab and they put the hijab in their bag and then they enter the school. What is this? Why a convertible Muslim? This shows hypocrisy. Don't say what you don't do. Don't claim that you wear hijab and you don't wear hijab. 
make dua to Allah to help you with hijab, but don't be a two-faced person. Don't be a person who has double lives. That's not right. Next surah, Surah Al-Jumu'ah. And this surah talks about the obligation of Friday prayers for the Muslim men of this ummah. For the Muslim men of this ummah, all right? So, O oh believers, when the adhan is called for the prayer on the day of Jumu'ah, then proceed to the remembrance of Allah and leave trade, leave your job. Not leave for good, like, you know, leave the job uh, for an hour, go, pray, come back, and continue. That is better for you if you only knew. So whenever we hear the Jum'ah Azan, that's it. We should go. Like, not for ladies, it's not, a, it's not mandatory, but if you have a masjid and your masjid has a nice ladies section, proper one, then go. So there are three ways to pronounce this word, and all of them are correct, okay? Jum'ah, Jum'ah, and Jum'ah. Can you remember that? All of them are correct, inshallah. In this surah, the, like especially in Hafs and Asim recitation, which we do, usually do, it is Jumu'ah. So what do we do on Jumu'ah? And what is this day? This is a day of worship for Muslims. This is a day of gathering. So we meet and greet. And this is a day of learning. How? Khutbah. Khutbah of Jumu'ah is for learning. So these days, if you are deprived of the Jumu'ah khutbah because you're praying at home, Zuhar Salah, then listen to some khutbah anyways. Because Jumu'ah was supposed to be day of learning. So learn, gather, and worship. Inshallah, may Allah enable us to go out again to masajid and this time we won't slack, inshallah. Inshallah, right? Maybe we were slacking. Maybe we were not grateful enough for these opportunities. Maybe we were really bad Muslims, but inshallah, now is the time to change. Now is the time to become better because subhanAllah, if we won't become better, Allah's punishment can come again. Who can say that if one time this uh, virus goes away, it won't come back again. Who says that, right? So we have to behave before it's too late, inshallah. And you know, some sisters were asking about hijab. So let me just give the answer right now. So they were saying, or some brothers also, about some of the things which are hard for them to implement at school. Um, you know, something which is great for all of us now is this time of seclusion, this time of a break from other people, right? So inshallah, this is a tip. Right? You don't have to take it, but inshallah, if you do, it, will, it may help you. So after the break, when you go back to school, so let's say you were not wearing hijab before. Let's say you were not, for bro brothers, let's say you were not wearing, um, you know, proper long shorts before. You were wearing short shorts before. So, or you had other problems or whatnot. Now is the time to change. And when you go back, you know, sometimes we want to change. We are not bad people, alhamdulillah. You know, if you have iman, we want to change. If we have faith, we want to become better. But because of her friends, because of the people around, it becomes hard. How many of you agree with me? You know, it's, it's, it's not that we want to disobey Allah. No, no, no. We want to obey Allah. We want to be good Muslims. We want to go to Jannah. But you know, other people make it so hard for us. And it is hard. I totally understand. It is not easy. It wasn't easy for me. It won't be easy for you. But Alhamdulillah, this time is amazing. Why? Because inshallah, when you're going to go back, and if you go a different person, you can easily say, I'm changing for good because I don't want this virus to come back again. I don't want to displease the Lord. I don't want to displease our creator. Don't say Allah, okay? Because non-Muslims won't get it. Just say creator because they understand we, we are created, right? So always say creator so they get it. Because when we say Allah, they think negatively about our Lord, which is not right. So they should think positively about our creator because Allah blessed us so much. How can we uh, put a bad name for him, or, or how can we be reasons of people not liking Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? So inshallah, like when you go back, let me just give you an example. So let's say Brother Ibrahim goes back to school and Brother Ibrahim used to swear a lot before. Brother Ibrahim used to have like really gangster type friends. Now he's going to change. So now he has made this pact with Allah that, oh Allah, I'm not going to be a gangster anymore. That's not me. That's not a Muslim person. I'm going to behave because I don't want to be punished with another big trial like this. And then his friends, you know, gangster friends are gonna make it hard for him for sure. They're gonna say, oh, look at you. Oh, too pious. Oh, too righteous you are. Then what are you gonna do? You're gonna say, I don't want you to suffer. 
I don't want anyone to suffer in this world. That's why I'm changing. So can I tell you another story? Sorry, we're going sort of kind of off track, but this, this is a very important topic. Can I tell you a story? Or do you want to do next ayah? If you want to do next ayah, do no. If you want to do story, say yes. Okay, it's a true story. It's a story from Bani Israel. I'm not sure if I've covered that before as well or not, but you know, just quickly, let's go over it. So the story is about um, a rain issue, right? And Musa alayhi salam. Did we cover the story before? Musa alayhi salam and rain, yes or no? Okay, so let's just listen to it again so we understand it. Even if we know the story, it doesn't matter. It's gonna help us understand this um, example better. So there was no rain going on. It was a famine-like situation. People were suffering and they were asking Musa alayhi salam to make dua to Allah so that he would send down rain and they would have crops and they would have animals and they would you know, thrive again. But what happened, Musa alayhi salam, when he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he could talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, remember? So he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, for help and he said, you know, please send rain down. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Musa alayhi salam that there is one person, only one person in your community that person is not good. That person is a sinner, big time. That person has sinned really bad. So because of that person, there is going to be no rain unless that person leaves your area. So Musa alayhi salam comes back and he tells everyone that okay, there is one culprit, there's one bad person. He has to leave. When he leaves, then we will have rain, inshallah. And then they're all waiting. Everyone's like scared, oh my God. Is, that, is it me? Is it him? Is it her? Oh my God, who's that? Imagine a situation like if you are called out like that in public, if you are the culprit, leave so that we can survive. So uh, no one moved, no one moved an inch and it started raining. And Musa Islam was curious because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him that it's not gonna be raining and it's raining already. Can you guess why? Can you guess why? Who knows the answer? If you know the answer, then raise your hand. Okay, Brother Ahmed uh, Mohsen. Wait a second. Can you talk? Yeah, I can talk. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Brother Mohsen? Okay, Sister Dua Iftikhar. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. I think there's something wrong from, from my end. I cannot hear no one. Sorry about that, guys. All right, so the reason is that, subhanAllah, the reason was that one person, the one who was not good, he said sorry to Allah. He repented in his heart that, oh Allah, forgive me. I won't do that again. Please forgive me. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them with rain. So when you go back to school, school you can tell them the story that I don't want to be that one person because of me, whole country or whole uh, subhanAllah world suffers. That's why I'm trying to obey my creator. Easy, right? Comparatively easy, right? Can you try doing that? So inshallah, change for good. If someone mocks you, someone makes it hard for you, you can say it is actually for the better of the whole world. That's why I'm doing this. It's not that, you know, I'm doing it just for me. I'm doing it for everyone because I don't want anyone to suffer because of me. If all of us become like that, the life will become amazing. So we learned that whenever it's Juma time, we should leave our other stuff, job, shopping, anything, and we should go and pray. And after Juma is done, then we, should, we can easily go out and we can um, work again, no problem. For Jewish people, it was hard because they had to, uh, you know, not do anything on Saturday, but worship. But Alhamdulillah, it's not like this for us. We can easily do other things as well and it is allowed for us. Okay, there's another surah which is called Surah Al-Munafiqun in this um, juz. And in this Jews, we learn, oh, sorry, in this surah, in Surah Al-Munafiqun, we learn about a lot of different traits of hypocrites, but also a solution is there. The solution is the dhikr. Remember Allah and you won't be a hypocrite anymore. So keep remembering Allah because when we keep remembering Allah, we're kind of reminding ourselves that our creator is watching. We cannot be bad. 
right? So we can't stay a fake person then because Allah knows us inside out. We can't be a fake person. I'm going to skip a few slides and I'm going to show you. Inshallah, we're going to do a few more. Um, okay, how about we do rest tomorrow so that we don't miss nothing? Okay, we will we'll do rest tomorrow because some very important ayahs are there. So Jazakumullah for this year for your attention and um, we will inshallah do this surah tomorrow because it is important to learn from it. Oh, very good. Barakallahu feekum everyone. If you want to type, what did you learn? You can type because sorry, I cannot hear you today. Inshallah. Type. No, no, don't copy paste. Questions on the portal, please just type what you have learned. All right? Inshallah. And Jazakumullah khairan kathira. Subhanakallah wa bihamdika. Ashhadu Allah ilaha illa anta. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.